Welcome friends. Today we are going to talk about the general anatomy of uh, brain stem in the continuation of topics related to the central nervous system. So brain stem is basically can be divided into three distinct parts from rostral to caudal. Rostral to caudal means cranial to caudal. It is midbrain, pons and medulla. M P M. Midbrain, pons and medulla. But it should be very much clear that cerebrum is attached on the posterior surface of brain stem by the fibers that extend from the pons. It is just posterior to the pons and fourth ventricle. You can see here, it is midbrain, pons, medulla. This part is cerebellum, which is connected just posterior to the pons and fourth ventricle. If you see internally, the brain stem is complex structure that contains a variety of components. So there will be different types of ascending fibers, that is anterolateral system, that is spinothalamic, posterior column, medial lamniscus system, and spinocerebral tracts. There will be descending tracts also, like corticospinal tracts or corticobulbar tracts. Then there will be cerebellar connections, that is from pontine nucleus to the cerebellum part. Then there is instruction system containing the reticular formation, neurotransmitter system, central pattern generation, and then there are different numbers of central nerve, uh, cranial nerve nuclei, which number of cranial nerves which are related to this particular uh, brain stem. Next, we can see the anterior part or the dissected part of the brain stem. We'll see the external features first of all. So this is midbrain, pons, medulla. So in the midbrain, you can identify simply the cerebral peduncles. You can see the change in color. Then you can see the middle part that is interpedicular fossa. So these two parts you can identify from the anterior side in the midbrain. Then you can see the pons. This is pons right? and the peduncles, cerebellar peduncles, which you can see from the anterior side. Then in the medulla, there are three parts, pyramids, olives, olives are just lateral to pyramids and anterior median fissure. The line of fissure which is present in between the pyramids will be called as anterior median fissure. So these are some external features we can easily identify from the anterior side of the brain stem. Again, you can see if you want to see, that is, these are the cerebellar peduncles, interpeduncular fossa, pons, then pyramids, olive, and anterior fissure. Next, we can see the anterior branch of key points. So underline the cerebral peduncles, basal pons and pyramid is the descending corticospinal tract responsible for the voluntary motor activity. This fiber crosses the midline in the caudal medulla into the pyramidal decussations. So this is cerebral peduncle, then pyramids, then pyramidal decussation which happens in the medullary part. So these are the some important features in the anterior surface. Next, talking about the posterior surface, where you see the same thing from the behind. In the midbrain part, you can see there is the superior colliscus, inferior colliscus. This part you can only see when the thalamus is already removed. In the pons, you can see the superior cerebral peduncle, middle cerebral peduncle, and inferior cerebral peduncle. So these are the part of peduncle which are going to attach to and fro from the cerebellum, which is present in this side only. Then in medulla, you can see there is fasciculus cunatus, fasciculus gracialis, and obex. These are the three parts which you can simply identify from the posterior side along with fourth ventricle. Fourth ventricle also is visible from this particular side. Again, we can see superior thalamus, uh, colismus, then inferior colliscus, superior cerebral peduncle, middle cerebral peduncle, and inferior cerebral peduncle. Then in medulla part, fasciculus cunatus, fasciculus gracialis, obex. And in between pons and medulla, there is fourth ventricle. Remember this, we are talking about the posterior brain stem. So the key features which are present here in the midbrain region, the inferior colloquy are the important part of auditory pathway. The superior colloquy are important for the visual pathway. The two, there are two things, superior and inferior colloquy in midbrain, and both are related with visual and auditory respectively. In the pons, there are three cerebral peduncles which are bundle of fiber that connect the brain stem and cerebellum. In the caudal part of equina, uh, medulla, the fasciculus gracialis and fasciculus cunatus are the separated by the 
posterior median sulcus and overlie the ascending posterior column thread, which carries the sensory information about the proprioception, fine and discriminative touch and vibrations. Next, we can see the fourth ventricle and obex. The fourth ventricle lies over the rostral medulla and caudal pons. The central canal of spinal cord extends rostrally into the caudal medulla and then opens into the fourth ventricle at the obex, which you can see only in the posterior side. So this is fourth ventricle and this is the obex where it is connected with the lower boundary. Then we have to see about the different types of cranial nerves which are present in this particular brain which are arising from here. So you can see it is cranial third, oculomotor, then trochlear from the boundary or the junction of both, then trigeminal, abducens, then again from the junction, facial, festocochlear, glossopharyngeal, cranial nerve number 10, it is vagus, hypoglossal and accessory. So most of the cranial nerves you can see are arising from the uh, brain stem part only, except the first one that is ol olfactory. Next, we can see a 3D model of the brain stem type of one. But let's wait for it. So here, what basically we are seeing, it is the external features of the brain stem in very short. But these are the important features which we have to recall while demonstrating the model or while giving the viva. So this feature, you have to be very much in control. You have to learn it. You can escape the very detailed part where the nucleus and all these things are told. But this particular part has to be learned efficiently so that you can talk in the viva actually. It's taking some time to upload. Now we can see the parts one by one. So first of all, the topmost part is the thalamus, which is a pair structure. The left thalamus is shown here. The responsible for processing and relay, relaying of the regulating information to and fro the cerebral cortex. So it is a relay center, which convey the message towards the cortex and brings the message from the cortex via ascending and descending tracts. Then you can see midbrain, it is the most rotational part of the brain stem, bordered to the DNC floor. The midbrain contains the nuclei associated with the cranial of 3, 4, and 5. The midbrain also includes the corpora, corporogemina, that is superior and inferior colloquy as the well. They have deep gray matter as red nucleus and substantia nigra. These nucleuses will be taught in the basal nuclei when we have to talk about. Then you can see the superior calliculus is the paired part on the superior side responsible for the moving objects, scanning stationary objects, and reflexes related to the visual stimuli. Then inferior colliculus, the paired structure on the right inferior colliculus noted here. It is responsible for the auditory. We have already talked about it. We are going to talk about it. Then you can see trochlear nerve, nerve number four, which are coming, which are coming arising from the trochlear nucleus in the midbrain. The trochlear nerve is the only cranial nerve that arises from the dorsal brain. Remember, this is only cranial nerve arising from the dorsal brain stem. Then here you can see the superior cerebellum peduncle, the part which was connecting pons with the uh, cerebellum. It is contained mainly primary fiber that connects cerebellum to contralateral basal pontine nuclei. Then you can see the inferior cerebral colloquy. They are also the connectors, but here basically contains the afferent fibers from spinal cord and medulla oblongata. The inferior cerebral peduncle also contains Efferent fibers that are destined for the vestibular nuclei and ischilateral vestibular nuclei. Then middle cerebral peduncle is also there. It contains the efferent fibers from the dentate, emoliform, and globose nuclei. All these nuclei, I will take a lecture, give you a lecture on basal nuclei, then you can see all these things in detail. Then rhomboid fossa of the fourth ventricle, which is present between the pons and medulla from the behind side. Then obex, the most caudal aspect, number 10. 
you can see here obex is the narrowing of the fourth ventricle to become the central canal of the spinal cord then dorsal median fissure then fasciculus gracilis is a pair structure coming from the lower limb they carry the uh, proprioceptive touch pressure and vibration information then fasciculus cuneatus again a paired structure they carry proprioceptive touch information basically from the upper limb so now you can see the cranial lobe number 2 that is optic nerve coming from the uh, making the uh, information from the ipsilateral retina then optic chiasma the crossing of the axons of medial retina an optic tract the paired structure which is shown here the medial and lateral epicentral bone the results is the the primary optic tract primary carrying the visual information from the contralateral visual field then lateral geniculate body there are two geniculate one lateral and medial the so lateral one is basically which contains from the lateral geniculate nucleus mostly they can be interchangeable and representing the visual field lateral one is for the light light is for visual and you can see the medial geniculate which is basically for the auditory cortex information then you can see here the paired uh, one motor part the cerebral peduncles contains the fiber data resting for the spinal cord cortical spinal fibers then in fundibulum that is the inferior process from the uh, hypothalamus which connects with the neuro hypophysis it is posterior part of the pituitary the memory body then oculomotor cranial nerve which is the third one then pons as you can see abducens then superior olivary nucleus and facial nerve then cranial lobe number 8 that is audio vestibule then medulla which gives the arise to the fifth seventh eighth ninth tenth eleventh and twelfth they are all associated with the medulla then pyramids we have already talked about them then pyramidal diffusion where the crossing over takes place so this was all about the uh, brain stem in 3d view also and in the interactive manner also